Good morning. This is the first part of the pork bun knee bowls. It's a two-parter because it is a slow cooker recipe and I love slow cooker recipes, but slow cooker recipes mean that you have to actually mix something up and then put it in your crock pot, your slow cooker, which I have done. Uh, the recipe calls for one pound pork tenderloin. So when you go to the grocery store and buy the pork tenderloin, they're usually in a package with two pork tenderloins in it. So most of the time it is two pounds of pork tenderloin within that packet or approximately two pounds. So that will not feed us for two nights, which is what I want to do. I want to feed all five of us for two nights and my children and husband love this recipe. So I was going to double the recipe, which is what I would do for one night, but I decided to quadruple it for two nights and anything that we have left over, I'll just put in the freezer. The meat was fresh, everything was fresh, so I could just pop it in the freezer if we don't eat it, which we might. But all I did was take it out of the package I rinsed it and I put it in my crock pot like this. I'm going to salt and pepper the pork first. So it's going to be about a teaspoon of salt. So I'm just going to take a teaspoon of salt and I'm going to do about half of it over the top here. And it calls for about a quarter teaspoon, actually, no, and Laurie, my math buddy here, can help me. If I'm going to do an eighth of a teaspoon times four, that's a half a teaspoon. If it's not a half a teaspoon, tell me quick. It's half a teaspoon. Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle about half of the pepper over the top here. And then I'm going to take a set of tongs, which would have been helpful if I'd gotten those out of the dishwasher, but I didn't. So, I'm gonna take a set of tongs and I'm gonna turn over the pork tenderloin because I already touched this nasty mess raw and I'm not doing that again. So I'm just gonna flip them over in the crock pot. Okay. And I'm going to put the rest of the salt and pepper over See, I just flipped them over, the rest of it over the top. It's the rest of the teaspoon of salt and the rest of the half a teaspoon of pepper. Okay, and if you get too much pepper, well, there's not too much pepper, so it doesn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> Laurie, those are my only math skills, cooking math skills. Okay, the recipe is a skinny taste recipe. I think her name is Gina Homolka. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but the skinny taste stuff I love because it is lots of different kinds of food and she generally speaking um, lightens the recipe. She makes a leaner cut of meat. She does less sugar, she does less fat, but she keeps all the flavor, which I love. So I have here, four jalapeno peppers that I'm going to cut up. The recipe calls for one jalapeno pepper, but I'm doing it times four, so yep, this is a math lesson this morning for everybody. And since I've been practicing not touching my face for the last two months, this will not be a problem to light myself up with jalapeno juice. But all I'm gonna do is cut the caps on the top and the little hard tip at the bottom off these peppers. And clearly, if you are not into super spicy food, don't add as much, right? I mean, you really can make the recipe do whatever you want it to do. It's, you're cooking it for you or for your family, so. And generally speaking, if I was gonna do something like to say, put this in the fresh corn salad that I did, I would slice it down the middle long ways and I would take a spoon and I would scoop out the seeds and the ribs in the middle which is where all the capsaicin is and it makes it hotter but I'm not going to do that because this recipe needs the heat and you should have to put the whole pepper in there so I'm just going to rough up actually who am I kidding everything in my kitchen is rough chopped I'm not all that precise with a knife 
there are probably several people in the world that are happy about that. But all I'm going to do is just cut them up. And I think I need to sharpen my knives. Always need to sharpen my knives. Cut these jalapenos up and I'm going to lay them over the top of the pork tenderloin in the bottom of my crock pot. Now, and, and when I say lay, I'm not that precise. All I'm gonna do is take the pieces and put them over the top of the meat. And I am putting jalapeno seeds everywhere. Yes, and the dog just heard my tone of voice change. Y'all, she's hysterical. When my dog hears my tone of voice change, when I'm in the kitchen and it sounds like maybe I'm frustrated, she gets up immediately to run in here and find out if there's something that she needs to help me clean up. But I'm not gonna let her help me clean up the jalapeno seeds. All right, so this is what it looks like. Just imprecisely thrown in there. Okay, now for the good stuff, the sauce. You make a sauce to go over the top, and I'm gonna rinse my hands off so that I don't accidentally light myself up. Okay, the sauce that goes on it is really pretty simple. It's actually no, no rocket science to it. It is soy sauce, garlic, and brown sugar. Is that it? I think that's it. Yes, soy sauce, garlic, and brown sugar. Um, it's really important for this recipe to use low sodium soy sauce because you've got kind of a lot of it and your meat's gonna be sitting in it for several hours while it's cooking and you don't wanna get it too salty, which I'm pretty sensitive to salt. So generally speaking, I don't add a lot to it, which is why the whole marinara sauce thing freaked me out because all of a sudden it got salty the other day. But um, it calls for, the original recipe calls for a quarter cup reduced sodium soy sauce Clearly, since we're doing it times four, that means I need to make a cup, put a cup in there. And I've got a new bottle. I love this stuff. I'd never heard of this brand before. <laughs> I don't think I can pronounce it because it is in an alphabet that I can't read. But, um, oh, Lee Kum Ki soy sauce. I love it. Wegmans carries it. I have no idea. I haven't looked, at it any looked for it anywhere else, but I love it. Of course, Kikaman, any of the other, any soy sauce will do. We're not, we don't need to get super precise. Somebody explain to me why soy sauce always pops up so badly when you're trying to pour it. Okay. Now, quarter cup soy sauce. Because I'm lazy and I don't want to watch wash a bunch of bowls, I usually just if it's only gonna be just a little bit other than the cup that's in my measuring cup, I'll mix it in the measuring cup, just easier. Um, and if I need if I need to, I'll put it in the bigger measuring cup, but it's not that big of a deal. All right, to this soy sauce, we're gonna add brown sugar. And the original recipe calls for one tablespoon of brown sugar. So I'm going to add four tablespoons of brown sugar. The first time I had a banh mi sandwich was actually at a brewery, I think, and it was amazing. So amazing that I sort of started ordering them everywhere else I went. Some of them were really good, some of them not so much, but I love the flavor of the marinated pork and then there's usually a pickled vegetable on it. So that sort of tanginess really appealed to me. Okay, it calls for three cloves of crushed garlic in the original recipe. So that would mean three times four is 12 for what I'm doing. Um, one clove of garlic, we've already established how much I love these little jars. Um, one clove of garlic is half a teaspoon. So if I do, I don't wanna do 12 half teaspoons, but I can do six whole teaspoons. See, Laura, we are just mathing all over the place today. So. One, two, three, four, 
Nobody panic, I've got another jar. Five. And I'll open the other jar. To get my sixth teaspoonful. Okay. And it smells so incredibly good. I wish this could be scratch and sniff. I love it. Okay, I'm just gonna hit it with um, a whisk and just get the brown sugar dissolved into the soy sauce. Can't tell you how happy it makes me that everything fit in this one thing, so I'm gonna get one dish. All about ease of use. Okay. No. Bon me bowls. McKenna just came down and realized we're having bon me bowls for dinner. I think this makes her happy. Okay. Now, you saw how long I mixed it for. That was all it took to get all that brown sugar dissolved into the soy sauce. Now, super precise, not precise at all. I'm going to just pour it over the meat. There's a note on the recipe that says that if your slow cooker runs hot, that you can add a quarter cup of water in addition to the liquid that you've already got. I gotta tell you, I've never had a problem with mine running super hot and I've never had a problem with there not being enough liquid to make the meat cook up just right. So, I'm not gonna sweat it. I guess when I look at it later to just check on it, and by look at it, I mean literally look through the top because if you open it, then it takes like 20 additional minutes for the crock pot to come back up to temperature. Um, let me show you what this looks like if I can. Can you see that? Okay, which is not accurate at all because, I don't know, there we go. Tell you what, the camera work alone is ridiculously hard. Okay, now, put the lid on it. I'm going to plug it in and it's gonna go on low heat for six hours and I haven't ever had a problem with that not being enough time so I'm gonna do low cook even though I have added all of this additional meat to it it still should be fine so it's on low cook for six hours this recipe is great because it's super easy you saw what I did it was like nothing well, the stuff that goes with it is even easier. It's really easy if you cheat and do what I do and buy all the stuff already chopped up for you. <laughs> you put um, shredded red cabbage with it and they actually sell the shredded red cabbage in bags in some stores or it's like no big deal to just chop it off because those little red cabbages are not that big and they're not hard to chop. Shredded red cabbage, um, cucumbers, English cucumbers or Persian cucumbers, either, you know, the big one or the little one. And I don't de-seed them or anything. I just cut them up. Um, actually, I'm wondering if cucumbers go with this or if that's just something I added. Huh, that'll be a surprise for the next one. Um, also, you make a quick pickled vegetable salad with matchstick carrots, and which they sell in bags, or you can just chop them up. Um, it just takes forever because my family loves that stuff so much. I have to make way over and above what the amount calls for in the recipe because they eat crazy amounts. <laughs> McKenna says, correction, she loves it. Um, but I wanted to show you that it's, it's matchstick carrots and then you cut up radishes. So matchstick radishes. And I have used just the regular little red radishes that you find in any grocery store in America. Um, it takes forever because they're tiny, but I like to use better, and it calls for a daikon radish, which I kept out to show you because I'm not going to make you guys sit and watch me try to julienne this because good golly, we would be here all day. So this is a daikon radish. It's like radish on steroids. It has substantially the same taste as the little red ones, um, there is some differences, but I love them. I actually will cut them up into sticks and just sort of eat them as part of crudite platters as well. So um, you peel them just like you do a carrot, and then I'll just cut it up 
and um, Julie in it. So, I will, when this is over, I will do another video and show you guys how to do the pickled um, carrots and radish salad that goes with it. And I'll show you how to assemble the bowl. It's also got cilantro in it. At least for part of our family, part of us thinks cilantro tastes like soap. Part of us loves it. So I will have cilantro right. available as well. And yeah. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. This is our favorite recipe, one of our favorite recipes. So I'm excited about it for tonight's dinner. Bye.